Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm your host, Meredith Dykstra, and this is episode number 156. We have our resident cellular healing specialist, Dr. Daniel Pampa, on the line. And today we welcome very special guest, Dr. Randy Michaud. Before we jump into today's topic, let me tell you a little bit more about Dr. Randy. Show is a chiropractic physician. He received his Doctor of Chiropractic from Palmer College of Chiropractic in Florida in 2007. Additionally, he has extensive training in cellular health and cellular detox. He is a speaker, husband, father of four awesome kids, and a Spartan racer. Dr. Randy believes that we each have a God-given purpose. As we seek to understand this purpose, we are led and guided in ways that strengthen both our physical and spiritual health. Welcome, Dr. Randy, to Cellular Healing TV. We have a lot to talk about today. Thank you so much. I am I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we're pleased to have you. You know, we want to just uh, always bring testimony uh, to what we're doing. You know, we have a growing group of doctors that are doing something very unique and you know changing lives all over the planet. So, and you're one of them. So uh, we want to hear from you. You know, but uh, let's start. Hi. You know, you have a quite a great personal story. Start there. I mean, what what brought you into this? You know, it's it's. I was talking to Meredith before, and I went back and preparing for this. I went back to really 2011, where, you know, I'm six three. I weigh about 185. And I had dropped down to about 155. Wow, uh, my weight. I mean, yeah, I was a red. But I'm, but I'm short. I'm five nine. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't. I didn't understand why. Uh, here I am, a chiropractor. I'm doing all the things that I know how to do, um, but yet I, I, I don't feel like I'm digesting food. I'm getting migraine headaches almost <laughs> weekly, if not every other day. Um, I had to shut my office down multiple times because migraines were so severe that I just I couldn't function. I couldn't work and went to a, a holistic doctor and, you know, she essentially told me that your gut is a wreck. Go figure uh, with all the things that I've learned now. Um, and she said that you're on your way to colon cancer. And I'm like, I'm 33. How is this even possible? You know, that's like, that's something that people get in their 70s, not their 30s. And uh, so for the first time, my wife and I were really exposed to the, the necessity of, of organic foods, of reducing sugar, of concepts with how the liver helps detoxify. And again, here I am thinking that I know a lot about health, but really realizing that I didn't know anything. Um, thought I knew a lot. And so we, we, this was really, my wife and I, this was the start of our journey in health. Uh, we made a lot of drastic changes. We cut out a lot of the, uh, almost all the refined sugars. I was eating a, a super restricted diet, which, you know, you only do those things that restricted if there's a compelling reason. And, you know, my compelling reason was I've got four kids. There's no way that I can let this thing keep going. And I've got a practice and a wife. And so, so that was, that changed. So we improved. My health got better, started seeing my, my weight gain, um, and got back up to my normal weight, 180, 185. And, and things were going along really well. And then 2014 hit. And you know, my dad, came in to the office probably 10 to four to five days before my, my 37th birthday, 38th birthday, and uh, said, I've, I've got cancer. And it's of the liver. And um, you could just, you know, my dad was former Marine. So he always had this look in his eyes of determination and I can conquer anything. But, but on this day, I mean, I can still, on this day, that wasn't there. Um, there was fear. There was uh, anxiety. I don't know what's going to happen. And, and I remember this was really a turning point for me because with everything that, again, I thought I knew, I can't. How come I didn't see these things? Mm -hmm. as, as, as he went forward, he, he died two months later. And uh, this was middle of September, so he died two and a half months later, end of September. And it just rocked all of us. And then I began to put things together and I saw prediabetes. 
I saw things with autoimmune that, you know, looking back, I can start to piece things together. And so then I'm seeing my own self in that, like, wow, this is where I, you know, was maybe headed. And so things again had to change. And then if that weren't bad enough, my sister's health began to tank. And this is where I really met, met you and was introduced to, to, to True Cell Detox, was a doctor in Boise, Idaho, Dr. Todd. Um, my sister was introduced to him. And I remember, I'll never forget our conversation where for the first time she had hope because she was hearing, you know, she was talking about cellular inflammation and chronic inflammation of the cell and toxins and, and gut health and things that, um, you know, that I had, I had heard of. And I had met you at a Dr. Uh, Fred conference and started following your stuff online, but still was such tip of the iceberg. But as I'm hearing things from her, I'm like, Jenny, you have to do this. I mean, this is, this is everything that you need. And talk to Dr. Watts. And then he said, hey, there's this seminar coming up. You need to go. And I remember listening to you and, and hearing everything that about true cell detox and about ancient healing strategies. And, and it just, I've never been more like determined to, this is what, this is my path. This is what I've been led to. And it was truly, you know, a, it was where I was supposed to be the right time, the right timing for me. Um, because I had had a short conversation with you. I don't know if you remember, but probably a year and a half prior to that. And I said, you know, I'm not ready to make these changes yet, but when I am, I'm going to call. And, uh, you know, so now, now here I am, um, made some, our whole family has made these phenomenal changes with cell detox and my wife is doing this. I think she is more spot on than I am with things. And to see her health, found out she was pre-diabetic. Yeah. And completely have, has changed that. Her life has been changed. And then my life has been changed. Um, you know, we talked about these Spartan races and the change that I've seen physically in myself in terms of recovery and stamina and mental clarity has just gone through the roof. And I've, I'm getting to levels that I really only, only hoped for at best. <clears throat> yeah, I've watched uh, your health change through this, uh, you know, just implementing what, what you teach right now, what we teach. And I'll tell you, you know, there's your call. People are being called. Doctors are being called into this um, because there is so many people that are experiencing exactly what you experience. You know, cancer, you know, I, we, we, did, we talked about this on the doctor call today. I don't know if you were on the training call, but you know, um, someone uh, in our profession just had died. He wrote a book about cancer yeah. and people were taken back by it. Now he had cancer five years uh, past and he wrote a book about conquering it. And I think everyone was stunned that he died. And when I was asked about it, I wasn't, not because I'm negative and not because I didn't love who he was. Um, the guy was a world changer. However, you know, I said, this was a deep rooted thing, 30 years of, you know, bioaccumulating toxins in our flesh. And, you know, I know that he didn't dig deep enough, long enough to those deep rooted tissues um, and, and really remove this source. You know, when you understand that we've been bioaccumulating toxins for the years that we have since our mother's, you know, womb, triggering certain genes, driving cellular inflammation, causing prediabetes, cancer, and you know, everything else that we're suffering from, it's like, it's amazing that we all don't have cancer, honestly. You know, it's like, I think that all, every one of our, uh, the doctors on the phone, we all walked away from the conversation today, more inspired, I, you know, to do multiple brain phases, continue to do brain phases. You know, I know even me, you know, it's like, I do, them. I just got off one, um, a, you know, a week ago, you know, it's like, but you know what, I'm doing them more frequently. You know, just knowing that the amount of toxins we're exposed to today, it's just unrelenting and we live a clean life, but not to mention what you've accumulated from a child. You put all that together, you know, I'm telling you, Dr. Randy, it's, it's amazing that more people don't have cancer, but you were headed down that road. You know, how has that changed you as a practitioner? You know, to know that you're bringing the truth 
you know, how's your headspace come? Because, you know, you've been changing lives now in the short time, you know, that you've been doing this program. I mean, you're, you're making no difference all of a sudden. I mean, what changed here? You know, there was, again, I go back to my dad and thinking that not realizing all the things that he had been exposed to, you know, in Vietnam, exposed to Agent Orange, um, you know, growing up, he talked about running through the fields as they were spraying DDT. You know, it's a, a field of just white, running through it, thinking how cool it was, and, you know, us laughing about it. But, you know, these were the things that started, you know, decades ago with him, you know, as a kid. And so what's changed for me is this mindset of you were running out of time. Right? There, there, there's not enough time to delay and hope that something comes along or hope that, you know, well, I'll just let nature take its course. It's yeah. been this mindset change of, of if I don't change now, then are my kids going to have a dad for, Absolutely. you know, through my 70s, 80s, 90s, 100? Um, are they going to be around? And my wife looking at her health, you know, is the same. Here I am again, a chiropractor. And unrelenting back pain in my wife and things that just weren't, I didn't understand them. And, and now that I see how, and I think you said it best, this bioaccumulation, it's not one thing. You expressed this so eloquently on the, the vaccines revealed that it's not just one, it's this whole accumulation starting in utero and building up. And in really understanding that, and I mean, understanding it here, not here, this is, yeah. this is part of it. But understanding it here is just, you feel compelled, I feel compelled to, to share, hey, this is what I'm doing and this is why, and this is how your life can, can change and really finding out what do you want? Why do you want it? And so it's all been about mindset. Um, and my mind wasn't always in the right place. Um, I've always been one that, that wants to help, that loves to serve, but the, 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 the belief in myself has not always been there. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and I think this goes with, with healing the cell. You've said this, others have said this, that you are the five people you hang out with. Mm -hmm. And I had to take inventory of who am I, hang, who do I talk with most frequently? And, and I can say that that has changed. And that has changed me from a the mindset uh, point as well, not just health, but you know, spiritually health, emotional health. It's gotten me to a much higher place, so that I can sit down in front of one, some someone, stare them in the in the eye, and tell them, "This is how you're going to get your life back. Yeah. This will get your life back." No, no doubt, and confidence that you're bringing the real deal. Confident that you're bringing something that no other practitioner is bringing. You know, when we look at the MTA or the multi therapeutic approach, uh, you know, we we were discussing it today as a group of doctors, you know, it's like, we, we know we have such a confidence knowing that we're bringing, you know, the answer. We can't say we have all the answers, but you know, we have something so unique, you know, that, that nobody else is bringing, you know, so, now what, what changes have you seen? I mean, you, you, you know, now that you're dealing, um, you know, I mean, talk about some of the cases you, you do a lot of thyroid, uh, you do a lot of, um, I, I think maybe uh, diabetes, but uh, talk about that. Well, let me, if, if I can, let me start with myself, if that's okay. Um, because, yep. Again, here I am now, you know, this was back, so last year, last April, um, I had finished my fourth year of, of Spartan racing. I've got this bug that I love doing these endurance events. Even during the race, I find myself that I really enjoy them, but I would finish one and I'd be laid up for a week. Mm. Uh, I would have, my, my legs would just, ache and walking upstairs, let alone trying to do squats or trying to train for the next one. Uh, it was, I wouldn't say debilitating, I think that's too strong of a word, but um, I had to rest for like a week and, and I wanted to exercise more. I remember talking to you in, in April or May and, and you had looked at, at my questionnaire, at my stuff, and you'd said, you know, here are some things I need, I think you need to, to change. And the, the first one, and ketosis and you said you have so much stress that you're putting on your body through these races that you have to down regulate inflammation you have to get your cells uh, stronger and he said and you said you know so 
get into ketosis. And I told Meredith before the show, I'm like, you want me to fast when I'm exercising? Really? Yeah. I remember doing that, you know, years ago or, you know, on a fast Sunday at church and migraines and, you know, I'm in a dark room for three hours, but you said, no, no do this and you're going to see the results. And so I'm like, okay, I know that he knows a lot more than I do and he's been down this. So I'm going to start. And I think that day I said, Jen, here's what I have to do. Blah, blah, blah. I went on with it. And I think the first, the first race that I had was maybe a month after that. And felt really good through the race. It was 15 miles. For those people that don't know what a Spartan race is, you have obstacles of you're carrying 60 pound buckets of rocks, hauling 55 pound logs, um, rock wall climb or, or log climbs, sorry, wall climbs, um, climbing ropes, going through mud, and all these are on a mountain course. So a ski resort hill that we're going up and down while doing all this stuff. And came off that first race and it was the first time that first, that one, I didn't have to eat anything during the race. Yeah. I didn't need these, these protein gels that I never felt good taking. Yeah. Otherwise, I felt like I was going to pass out in past seasons. And I'm like, this is really cool. This fat is adapted. You were fat adapted. So cool. Well, then I came off the race and my wife was like, you almost finished like you know, an hour before you did last year at the same, she was shocked. Wow. Uh, I'm up walking, I'm moving, you know, I'm, I'm talking and she's like, you're different. Um, and then I remember the next day we drove home from, I think it was New Jersey. We drove home that day, another six hours in the car. I got out of the car and was like, huh, legs feel pretty good. You know, maybe I can work out on, on Monday and started right back into training. And was like, wow, there's something to this. And, uh, you know, so that was my first step. And then you told me, you said, well, now you're going to need this product to see which is going to help with your performance. And it was funny because my wife in the background, she's like, he's sold. You said increased performance. He's going to buy it. Um, and so just long story short, the, the races that I did last year, I finished each of them an hour faster than I had the previous year and didn't have this burn in my legs. I could walk up the stairs when I got home, back in my office on Monday, feeling like life is good. Yeah. Right? You know, let's, let's do another race this week. Um, and I did three, you know, every three weeks this past year, I was doing a race. And so the recovery was huge. And what that helped me see was that, one, my cells were not in this chronic lactic acidosis state that I've learned from, you know, Dr. Darren and from you and Dr. Seyfried talking about that, which scared me to death when I learned about that. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this is going on in me, this buildup. And uh, so, so that alone has been really cool because it's encouraged my patients to say, well, I want to experience the same things that you are. Maybe I don't want to do a race, but we just see your health improving and how dedicated you are to it. And, and so that has been really neat to see effect that I never expected or never looked for, um, for people to start making changes in their own lives. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it gives you a different authority when you sit before a patient or a client, you know, having experienced it yourself, your confidence, you know, you come from a different, different place, man. I mean, honestly, you're changing lives like crazy now, you know, because you believe it, you've experienced it. Yeah. So, so now when I look at it with the patients that I work with, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is, is one to, to listen. I had someone come in last week that she said, you know, you're the first person. And she says, and I've been to holistic doctors. I've been to nature paths. I've been to so many but she said, with this approach that you have, you're the first person that's ever addressed my, my amalgams. You're the first person that's ever addressed the chemicals that I've been you know, using for the past 30 years with my business. And she said, I never once thought that that had, had affected me. And, and so this, this multi-therapeutic approach, as we're looking at how our bodies are changing, these toxins are just are, are 
killing us. It's a slow death, sometimes a fast death. And to begin to roll back the effect of, of toxicity on people, to see people <clears throat> start to lose weight for the first time in you know, 30 years because they're releasing toxins, they can, their body can let go of fat for the first time. And then the energy that, that's changing, it's such a, a delight to have people come back in for their follow-up and be like, oh my gosh, people are noticing my skin's better and my hair's better. And I don't have this, this brain fog. It's like this, is, this curtain is starting to lift. And it's, it's just amazing to see that. And here they've been stuck on Synthroid or you know, something else like that for yeah. five years. And they just keep increasing the dose when you know, their cells just can't perform. And we start to utilize this multi-therapeutic approach of working on the genes, working on their gut, working on their inflammation. It's like, there's just, there's just nothing like it. And, the, and the, the, the changes are lasting because you know, I know when I was getting my life back, you know, I could do certain things and I would go, oh my gosh, this is it, this is working, you know. And then a month later, I'm back to where I was. And then I'm on to the next thing and on to the next supplement and on to the, you know, and, and really none of it lasts until you get upstream and remove the cause, you know. And, uh, you know, one of our goals always, right, is to educate people in this process. You know, but if you work upstream and you truly get to the cause at the cellular level, man, it's a lasting change. You know, your life is going to stay this way. You're not going to end up a statistic, you know. It's like right. our, our message, you know, I, I hope it falls not on deaf ears. You know, it's you experienced it. I experienced it. You know, we all have experienced it, you know, and we have a world to change because the world's, even in the alternative world, it's, they're telling a different story. You know, people, human, wants that one thing. They do. They want that one darn miracle supplement or drug, pure, whatever it is, right? I mean, that's it. They don't want to really make the changes. They don't want to go upstream and do real detox. They don't, right. you know, but it's like, but that's, that's what got your life back, you know? So Meredith, I'll open up to some questions for you. You know, thanks for sharing, Randy. It was, you know, amazing story. Absolutely. Yeah, well, there's so much that we can talk about. And um, what I, I like to know sometimes is, okay, so Dr. Randy, you're implementing all these strategies, but what does that look like in, in the day of a life, in, in your life? So what are you, you know, eating for meals when you're, you're training? What does that look like? What are kind of some of the, the supplements you're doing? And what's your detox plan look like right now? And can you kind of share some more of the nitty gritty so our viewers and listeners can have some more take home strategies? Yeah. So, I mean, so one of the things that I've learned from you is this strategy of 511, right? Yeah. Five days on of intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that looks like for me is in the morning I wake up and it, and it blows some of my friends away that I'm not eating breakfast. Uh, I used to think it was the most important meal of the day, um, but, mm -hmm. but there's, no, so there's no breakfast. So I wake up and I love ASEA. I mean, it is, it is, I start with ASEA and Restore. That is my breakfast, that and water. Um, I won't eat again until around one, two o'clock. Sometimes it's not till I get home seven 30 ish. Um, but if I do have lunch, you know, often I will, I'll have a big old plate of broccoli, put a tablespoon of butter on it, avocado oil. Um, I'll, have, I'll have some meat, you know, I'll have some ham. Um, with that, I know the pork is maybe not in the cell diet, but still like ham. Uh -huh. But, um, but, you know, that's, that's kind of my lunch. And then for dinner, uh, Jen, my wife, has fully embraced this. And so, you know, we're going to have something where it's, it's high in fat, good fats. Um, we'll have something like last night was a, uh, was a stew. And we had some new vegetables that we tried out. Uh, we were doing some fermented vegetables. We did some sauerkraut. I think first time I've had sauerkraut in 20 years and really enjoyed it like you he said hey you can be happy you're eating you know fermented foods tonight and and then there was a broth in that bone broth so you know those are kind of that's kind of my day when we're intermittent fasting and i might i'll throw in you know maybe in the mornings even some coconut butter or some just grass-fed butter in general i'll just take a tablespoon and eat it straight uh, up it's so good 
<laughs> it tastes good, right? So that's that's my eating. And then in terms of of cell detox, I've been following the you know the, the the prep phase, the brain phase, the body phase, brain phase, and just doing cycles of that. Uh, yeah. Last Saturday, I started my an, another round of um, the on phase of that to continually detox, and I can tell that last uh, the first the first cycle of that was definitely yeah you're you're detoxing again. Um, so I'm following that, and I might throw in some things for my adrenals because of just how much I'm exercising and that and kind of the ASEA. So that's five days a week. One day I'll do a whole fast from dinner to dinner. Um, and I really find that I love those days. Yeah, me too. I love those days too. I used, I used to hate those days um, because within three hours I was getting migraines, had no idea that I had a blood sugar problem. I just thought, oh, everyone has this, right? And that's what they think. Right, they think, oh, everyone has headaches. Absolutely, yeah. And it's like, no, you know, I haven't had a migraine now for you know seven years, eight years, and so anyway, I digress. But I'll have that one day of of fasting, and then I have my my big eating day, and that's a chore. I've heard you say this before, Doctor Pump. Yeah. But it's like a chore to eat breakfast, and I have to force myself to eat before like ten o'clock breakfast. And it's hard some days, but you know I need to do that because I do find then that when I go back to intermittent fasting, that I'm I'm more lean. You know, the the two days following that, I'm like I I like my abs. It's yeah, that's cool. It works. It works. Um, yeah. You know, so that's that's what I've done, and then I've I'll do phases of that. So right now I'm not fully um, starting up. March is going to be where I really go full on into that. I would say this winter season, I felt like, you know, I think I need to stop with the intermittent fasting and just go back to three meals a day. During race season, I am full on in that, that ketosis state because I feel better. But even when I'm not doing full on ketosis, um, I'm still three meals a day and there is a fast day. And I look forward to that fast day. It's, it is a cleansing for me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah both physically and spiritually. No doubt. So when do you, uh, when are you exercising? Uh, you know, um, you exercise, do you exercise first thing in the morning, uh, mid morning? Uh, I try to do mornings. Um, I love, I love the mornings again, because of the things that you've taught me that in the mornings, my growth hormone and testosterone are at their highest. And if exactly. I'm going to eat and spike insulin, then I'm not going to. So I love exercising in the morning because it even, shoots that up that more um not to mention i feel like hey i've already accomplished something today like yeah. for instance today was a, a three and a half mile trail run um no breakfast hadn't eaten and beautiful day outside finally stopped raining after two weeks here in virginia but uh, mm -hmm. the mornings are i find the, the best time to exercise it's just this more clarity I know what I'm doing hormonally for the body, that I'm upregulating the hormones that are beneficial and reducing those that are not. And, and I think that's, maybe that's the mindset that has changed too, that I've talked about with people. This isn't about weight. It's about hormones and cell inflammation and reducing, doing everything we can to I'm make so ourselves as healthy as possible. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt, you know, and on a teaching note, you know, that spike between 5.30 a.m. to 8.30, we get our highest growth hormone rise, testosterone rise. So, you know, working out in that range is a great time, you know, because you do, you get that. And then working out on an empty stomach, you get another growth hormone surge, you know. It's so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hormone optimization, no doubt. I mean, days I can, but I'll work out later. You know, right. but studies show that the, the, the people who worked out early in the day, actually slept it got more time in deep sleep than working out later in the day so although i will work out later today if i have to um, no doubt you don't get as good a sleep so it does something again for the circadian rhythm uh you know hormone rhythm etc so you know working out in the morning definitely definitely yeah, helps totally agree Mm -hmm. well, it makes sense from an ancestral perspective too, whereas, you know, back, you know, in ancient times, they would get up early in the morning and work and kind of go, you know, earlier in the day, but in the evening they would rest more. So it kind of makes sense from that historical standpoint too. Yeah. 
Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Randy, if you oh, do you have a, something to talk to Papa? No, go ahead. Oh, I'm just kind of curious too with, with the fasting. So you shared a lot about intermittent fasting, but do you incorporate block fasting at all, or is that too challenging with with your racing schedule? No, it actually, um, I've done I've done a couple of those, and again, scary the first time. Uh, I did it with whey water, and but again, found that I, I really I liked it. Uh, it was so. I felt energized as opposed to a lot of people think, oh, fasting, lethargy, you know, no energy. It was really just the opposite. Uh, it was very beneficial. Now, during a, a race week, I, I, I won't. Maybe I, maybe other, some people might, but I don't, I won't fast during, you know, when I know a race is coming up a week before. But, um, you know, during this off season, I have. I've, I've incorporated these block fasts just last week. Um, it's almost three days, not intentional, should be, but it's almost three days of a, of a block fast. Um, I did have something at night, but still it was they're just very cleansing. And, and I feel that the benefit of that, especially after the race season and before, is to really, again, downregulate all the inflammation that we're accumulating daily and that four or five day fast is so healing for the body yeah and all my clients have felt better on it too maybe the maybe the second the third day they're not really enjoying that because they're hurting from glucose to burning fat but they come out of that and look back and they're like wow that really helped start to lift this curtain off me that i feel i i'm I'm not in the shadows anymore. I don't have this this fog, or at least it's been lessened. So, the block fasting is, I think, critical. Yeah, yeah. No, it is critical, I, you know, especially the challenge cases that we see. Um, I, without block fasting, it would be, um, yeah, almost impossible to downregulate some of the inflammation cycles that are there. And doing it while you're doing, you know, cellular detox man you know it's obviously part of our therapeutic approach for sure yes yeah. i'm just curious too so how has it been implementing the true cellular detox program in your office as far as kind of maybe some testimonials or stories you want to share so many people are reaching out more and more to our offices and you know we're yeah. hearing about true cellular detox they're so excited about it but just kind of seeking some more stories and maybe some special cases or some conditions that really responded to it i don't know if you have any anything you can share that's you know you seen in your clinic? Yeah, I and mean, there's there's there are a couple of people that I'm thinking of of specifically. And uh, one lady came in, and she had been started TCD was was not walking well, um, lots of just in bed probably 20 hours a day, and you know very very little resources to draw from. Started TCD. And I remember when she came back in the next month. So TCD, she was doing, I had her start in ketosis. I had her start intermittent fasting. Um, had her do a whey water fast in the beginning. And she started the prep phase. And she came back in that first month. And she had this, this huge smile on her face. And I'm like, okay, something's changed. And she said, I lost weight this month. And I'm thinking, well, that's cool. She's like, no, you don't understand. I haven't been able to lose weight for 10 years. Mm. And, you know, so that was, that was huge for her. We increased some things that she was doing. The next month, and I'll just go to most recently, she came back in and she said, I think I can go out and get a job again. She said, I think I can go back to work because my energy is high. Uh, I'm feeling better. I, I, my joints don't ache like they did. She said, this is probably 80% less this, this inflamed feeling in my body. And she said, I know that I'm getting my life back. Um, and, and it's just been, it's been remarkable to see this change in her. And she's starting a, she's starting a brain phase. I want to say this next week. So again, she was really excited about that. She's like, I'm just so excited that I get to get this toxicity out of my body and yeah. start to heal. Um, and she knows it. Um, we've got another, a, a couple that, that started this. They did it together and it was really cool. Um, 
both of them, again, this was kind of inspired because they said, hey, we see all the races you're doing. We want to do something like that, but we're not ready for it yet. And they did TCD together, um, incorporated some of the, the strategies and just felt their energy and start to increase their clarity at work. The stress that they had at work in both their jobs, very stressful. And they said, it's not bothering us as much. We're not, we're not feeling so just, you know, constricted because of the stress that we're feeling. And, you know, where our exercise is better, we feel better after we exercise, we're seeing improvements in our just so many different things in their health. And um, so it's really, and everyone's experience is different. And that's what's so neat. They all have different things. They come back and say, this is better, this is better, this is better. And it's unique to them. And that's what I love is that changing their lives and many of them are saying, well, this is going to affect my family and their family. And it's, it's generations. Yeah. Now, no, no doubt. You know, it's funny. I, I had a client today and um, she was saying, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you, let me tell you about my husband now. You know, he was the doubter and now, you know, he's, He's doing this and this. I have this all the time. It affects generations, even the ones who are skeptical in the same house because they start seeing the results, you know, of this one. And, you know, so, you know, that's funny. He, he got a hold of our uh, TCD uh, pilot challenge, right? He signed up unknown, you know, <laughs> true story. And so, you know, here he was, the doubter, and he did, he did it. And he's like been watching all the videos. And so now he's like harassing her, right? And, you know, it's like, so you just never know how you're going to affect people, man. So it's, it's a great thing. I mean, we live this life. We practice what we preach. You know, we all have our story, but you know, we have a message the world needs. No doubt about it. There's no doubt. So thanks for bringing it, Randy. You know, thank you for being on the show and giving your testimony. And thanks for living it day in, day out. And every patient, client that you come in contact with, man, they need you, bud. So awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dr. Pompa. And Dr. Randy, in closing, anything you'd like to share with our viewers or audience members who are listening, thinking about jumping into TCD, multi-therapeutic approach, want to implement some of the strategies, what would you say to them? You know, I would, I would go back to this 3% this, this rule that, that you teach, Dr. Pompa, that it's a choice. Yeah. The, 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 the health decisions that we make, the life that we want to have is 100% a choice. And when you take that step, and, and I love this principle, it's a principle of the gospel, that you take that step and the Lord is going to light your way. You know, you might not see where that path is going, but you know that it's right. You, I mean, everything inside of your heart says, yes, move forward. But everything here says, but what if? Da, da, da. When we follow our heart and take that step, I love how the Lord opens up this path to us. And, and we begin to see... You know, not with our eyes, but we get to begin to see with our spirit that, yeah, my, my body and spirit, when they are more in harmony, my life is better. I, I, can, I see things. I feel things more intently. Um, and so I would just say, take, take that step. Follow your heart, as scary as that may be sometimes, and know that when you take that, this was my sister. You know, every reason to say no but she took that step forward and it's changed her life and her family's life. It's changed my life. Big step. I mean, meeting you in Atlanta, huge step for me to take, but just take it. Yeah. And don't worry about necessarily the how worry about why, why do you want this? And how is it going? Why is it going to affect your life? Why do you want this improved health? And as you move forward in that, Everything of, of what and how, those things are just going to appear. But we've got to make that choice and, and take that first step. Now, well said, Dr. Randy. Well said. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Randy, for being on the show. And how can people find out more about you? Uh, so our, our website is advspinalcare.com. Um, we're on Facebook. I do a lot of Facebook Live videos on health and um, really love those. Um, again, advspinalcare.com and just look forward to helping as many people as are ready. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Pompa.
Thanks, Dr. Randy. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.